Good morning, Four Oaks Church. It's Thursday. What is it here? Wow. May 25th, we have Memorial Day weekend coming up. So glad you've joined us for this installment of our pastoral devotionals. So what we do is we are tracking through the Gospel of Matthew, and the sermon for that Sunday, um, that's the passage we studied the week prior. And the goal in this, of course, is to not just dispense theological information or Bible knowledge, but it's, it's to help all of us have or develop a set of interpretive tools that will help us be self-feeders. And so by, by bringing you along, helping you work through the passage in the same way that I'm working through the passage, hopefully um, there um, is some skills being imparted where you can study the Bible better for yourself. So we're walking through the Gospel of Matthew. We're in the Sermon of Mount of the Mount on <laughs> Sermon on the Mount, and in the center of the center of the sermon, of course, is this section on the Lord's Prayer. And we've been working through that this week. And let's read our text again. We're going to be in Matthew six verse seven, and of course, Jesus is speaking. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So we talked about this the last couple of days, but, but again, here is seemingly the way that the Lord's Prayer is organized and structured. And, and as, as a reminder, this is meant to be a pattern for us. It's not meant to be the only kind of prayer we pray or, 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 or to be seen as there, it's like some special incantation that if we say the right words, uh, certain kind of thing will happen. It, it's a pattern. It, it gives us the categories, uh, the foundation which we need to pray faithfully, to pray biblically. Of course, we're praying for other things, but we're, ne we're never straying far from the core of this prayer, that everything that we pray for um, will in some way be connected um, back to a particular category of the Lord's Prayer. But there's six petitions in the Lord's Prayer, the first three relate to God's glory, and the second three relate to God's gifts or God's grace to us. So one, the first three focus on the vertical, and the second three on the horizontal. And we've spent um, time this, this week already looking at the first three um, petitions, and now we, the, today and tomorrow, we're going to look at the last three petitions. And, and we're actually going to to, to camp out specifically on one verse this morning. It's verse 11. It's the fourth petition where we are called to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Or literally, in the Greek it could say, give us our bread for tomorrow. Now, <clears throat> there's a lot, a couple things I think we want to want to ask here. What, what does Jesus mean when he talks about bread? Um, and, and why does he talk about this bread um, being asked for daily? Okay, so w w bread and daily, that, that's what we want to want to talk about. So what, first, if you, if you got your Bibles, flip back to Proverbs 30. And this saying by Jesus. Remember, Matthew is steeped in the Old Testament, so he's, he's really highlighting those times Jesus is drawing from the Old Testament. And we think about Proverbs 38, and listen to what this says. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me, lest I be full and deny you and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and still and profane the name of my God. So, so the Solomon there, it says, look, I pray for our my daily bread, my daily provisions. Don't give me too much or lest I would cease to depend upon you. Or don't give me too little 
um, lest I be tempted to steal or do something that I shouldn't do in order to get that bread. So, so that's part of the backdrop. But I think as an Israelite, when they sat there and listened to Jesus talk about daily bread, undoubtedly their minds would have immediately gone to what? Well, the bread in the wilderness. So if you, if you flip back to Exodus chapter 16 for a second, okay? And the context, of course, is Israel's been brought out of Egypt. They are, one, they are in the wilderness. They're journeying to the promised land. And they're out there for a while, and they run out of food. And listen to what it says in um, Exodus 16, 2. And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. They literally did not have enough food to eat. They literally did not have enough bread, okay? <clears throat> so this idea that it was going to be God who had to provide for them daily bread, this is, I think, pretty clear. This is what is in the backdrop of this teaching from Jesus. Um, I think this is what the people would have immediately um, tuned into. Now, how did God choose to feed the Israelites? Well, we know that, that he caused the manna to form on the ground um, and that the people of Israel would wake up every morning and they would come and gather the manna. And, um, and so the manna, and, I, and again, I'm, 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 I'm reading here, it was a, a, a coriander wafer honey seed kind of thing. So it was something really tasty and good. Um, and it was to this that the Israelites, in part, would lean on to for their daily bread. God would make it supernaturally appear on the ground when they woke up each morning. However, God gave them a specific warning, and he told them um, not to gather more than they would need. So in other words, not to, not to save up, not to hoard it. Um, the only time they were to gather more um, than they needed was on the day before the Sabbath so that they did not have to go out and gather food on the Sabbath. They would have food that was left over, okay? Um, now, what we know is that the Israelites initially disobeyed this, right? They, 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 they were so hungry for food, they began to hoard it and mass it up, and God called, caused that um, bread to become spoiled and worms and maggots and all those sorts of things. Now, the question is, why did God only provide their meal daily? Why didn't he provide it all at once? Why didn't he allow them to gather more than they needed? Well, I think the, the, it's pretty clear. God wanted to remind them that it was by him and his supernatural work that he was providing food for them. It was this daily reminder that as they got up and they had no food, and they were looking for this food, the, the manna on the ground, they would know, they would be reminded without a shadow of a doubt, we are absolutely dependent upon God's provision. We're absolutely dependent upon God to give us literally our daily bread. If God had given it a month's supply at once or a year's supply, or if he'd allowed them to gather more than a day's worth, you can imagine what would have happened. They would have forgotten right? They would have said, it would have been kind of out of sight, out of mind. They would have been sort of in spiritual um, automated mode where um, over time they would forget where the manna comes from. They would presume upon the manna. Um, they might even think about their own ingenuity and the way they've saved and stored up the manna. And so God says, don't do it that way lest you forget me. Okay. Now, how does that apply to what Jesus is saying back here in Matthew 6, 11 about praying for our daily bread? Clearly, what Jesus is saying here is that part of our petitions to God need to acknowledge the fact that we are absolutely, completely, totally dependent upon him for our very life and breath and for everything that he's given us. Now, in a very affluent Western culture that we live in, 
This is so easy to forget, right? We, we think we're self-sufficient. We go to the supermarket and pick up food um, off the aisle. We're, we're, we're not even cognizant, right, of what goes into producing the things that we, that we need. And so by having a discipline of prayer in our life where we're praying for God's provision, then we're being reminded again where our who meets our needs and how does he meet them. Now, one other thing that I would that I would say about this is that if God were, okay, um, think about those times in your life if God when, when God does or gives a uh, you know, a superfluous amount of goods and resources. Again, our human temptation, of course, is to think it has something to do with our ingenuity and cease to pray for it. But the fact that we need this as part of our daily regimen is, again, to reminder that all good things come from above, right? That God is the giver of gifts and that we are completely, totally, 100% dependent upon him for, for all of our needs. Now, does that mean that we shouldn't save? Does that mean we shouldn't be wise? Does that mean we shouldn't invest? And again, I, don't, I think those are separate kinds of issues, okay? Um, there's lots of scriptures and proverbs about being wise with our money and saving and counting the cost and, and all, such, okay? However, there does seem to be a real emphasis here on living our life and praying in such a way that we never forget who we are in relationship to God and our ongoing need and dependence upon him. And so I think this is what Jesus is pointing us to in terms of this particular petition. Petition, give us this day our daily bread. And so for us, that can be manifested in lots of ways as we pray. We're, we're not just praying for food. We're praying for our jobs. We're praying for provision. We're praying for a heart of generosity and giving. How, how much should I save? How much should I give away so that I don't grow proud, so that I don't, I don't grow dependent upon my own riches, right? Um, how do I, Lord, live, a, live life in such a way that I communicate my ongoing need? I think all of these things are in view as we pray for our daily bread. How should I live my life? How should I order my stuff to communicate that my greatest treasure is heavenly treasure in God and not earthly treasure? So be encouraged with that. We'll be back tomorrow looking at these last two petitions and why the Jesus ends the ends the the Lord's prayer with these two particular things. All right, so let's pray. Lord, Again, thank you for this day, and we do pray that we would walk with you in such a way where we are dependent upon you, empowered by your spirit, and always cognizant that it's in you that we live, move, and have our being. It's in, it's in you and from you that we receive all good gifts. Lord, we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, everybody. See you tomorrow.